Hi, now I'm sure everybody knows this. If you take some aluminium, dissolve it in some gallium and chuck it in water, it will produce a ton of hydrogen. And the reason I'm sure everybody knows about it is because, oh, I think there's at least a million viral videos on the web about this, and I've been written to at least a dozen times of people saying, hey, Rob, have a look at this. And the whole thing came out, and I think it was the 14th of February 2022, in ACS Nano, in a paper published by UC Santa Cruz. You see Santa Cruz um, say that they have developed this using aluminium nanoparticles. Guess what they've done? They've rushed off to the patent office as fast as their little legs would carry them to slap a patent on it. And of course, who wouldn't? Now they're likely to get the patent. They're likely to get the patent because it bubbles on about nanoparticles, as does their paper. And of course, nanoparticles are the darling of chemistry, are they not? However, it's not new in the least. Purdue were working on this. They were working on this in 2007, and in May 2007, they had their own publication and their own patent, and that patent's there. They actually started a company, because, of course, when they did this, they did exactly the same as UCSC. They rushed off to the patent office and they tried to license it like mad, and they licensed it through an existing company in 2006 called Algalco, I believe. And it's still there, it's still in existence, trying to sell this system in what they call their Hydrogen on Tap. And they've got their Hot 5 currently running. They gave it a go doing an Indiegogo campaign. I don't know what the target was because it was a flexible goal, but they managed to raise all of £192. Which is a little embarrassing, really, if you think about it. However, the main researcher on this, a guy called Jerry Goodall, sorry, Woodall, said that he was working on this since 1967, when apparently he was in a lab in the semiconductor industries, scrambling to make better LEDs, optical connections, and super transistors for mobile phones, when he was looking at dissolving metals. Now, metals aren't easy to dissolve, because to dissolve something, the solvent you need has to have more or less the same energy between its bonds as a thing you're trying to dissolve, so they can mix together. Metal, of course, is very hard to do that with. And with aluminium, there's only really two things that are going to do that. Gallium, which is known about since the year dot, and mercury. It forms a uh, mercury with amalgam. Sorry, an amalgam with mercury. And if you dissolve aluminium in mercury, it does oxidise in the same way, but you get these mercuric aluminium oxide trees that take about a million years to grow. But they're absolutely beautiful. And there were several viral videos about that as well. So it's been around since around 1967 and the chances are it never really took off because of course in 1967 it cost you about 10 cents to fill your entire car i mean i'm joking but the price of gasoline in the u.s was just ludicrous around that time so of course having to pay an awful lot for aluminium in order to do that well nobody was interested in nobody was interested in the hydrogen economy either and so it was a, a go nowhere proposition but of course that all changed in the fuel crisis and the way we look at energy these days and so in 2007 it was a much more welcoming environment for this idea and jerry resurrected it through Pru uh, prudeau and they patented it gave it a go at turning it into a business and it went nowhere and it went nowhere until Santa Cruz came along and thought, hey, we'll try that again. And there's a reason it's very difficult to get this aluminium producing hydrogen idea off the ground. The reason mostly is because aluminium per kilogram costs about 230. Whereas gasoline per kilogram, remember per kilogram, costs about 130. So gasoline's very much cheaper, still very much cheaper, despite all this stuff about uh, yeah, damaging the environment, it is just cheaper. The other problem with it is that gasoline is roughly two and a half times energy dense, more energy dense than aluminium, and that includes the aluminium you get out by, uh, sorry, the energy you get out of aluminium by generating the hydrogen and burning it, and the heat of reaction that you might be able to get from the water where you're doing that, where you're creating the hydrogen. So the energy is less, the price is more, very much more. And that makes it very difficult to get any of these hydrogen on demand schemas going if your base material is aluminium, because this isn't the only one that's been suggested. The only thing you need to do to get aluminium to react with water is to remove that oxide coating. 
Once you do that, the aluminium is going to react with water, it's going to react with water and, and produce hydrogen and lots of hydrogen. The challenge is to remove that oxide coating and there are various ways of doing it. One way is to soak the whole thing in sodium hydroxide. Again, there are a ton of viral videos where people chuck aluminium cans into some drain cleaner and produce a lot of hydrogen. Another way is to put high voltage down it and spark the oxide off and then it will just react with the water and there's a patent for running a car based on aluminium wire system doing exactly that. So hydrogen on demand from al aluminium is um, really well known. Several methods around including this gallium dissolution one. The big issue with them is the cost of the aluminium. Now, when they were interviewed back in 2007, what Woodall said, well, what we really need to do, obviously, is reduce the recycling and the refining cost for digging out new aluminium and recycling old aluminium. If we can reduce that so that we can bring the aluminium down to less than gasoline, we stand a chance. You can do, or rather have a chance of doing that if you can bring down the energy generation cost to your electricity cost you less. And you can do it on site because it costs very much more to distribute electricity than it does to provide it on site. And aluminium obviously uses a, a lot of electricity and creates a lot of pollution in the form of red mud. So, big issue surrounding it. Not enough cost available. And it is certainly far from new. And those are the kind of disappointments that surround this announcement, really. I mean... It's great, it does, it does work, it's fantastic to see, it makes marvellous videos, but for anything more than a viral video on YouTube, it still has a lot of real problems. And these not just put a polish on it problems, these are ingrained problems that are going to cost quite a lot to solve and be quite difficult to solve. But we are in a crisis, and it is an option, so maybe we should stick with that one. Myself? I'm much more interested in things like the sodium hydroxide, or even more interestingly to my mind is this idea of blasting with a bit of high voltage. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the quick summary and the roundup of what was going on behind this, because so many people just go, oh look at this, it's amazing, that I thought a little bit of behind might help temper it a little bit and realise where it fits in the schema. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.